All right, we are live. We're going to do the usual game of making sure that everybody can see us. So if you're, I know there's a lot of people sat in the IRC channel watching right now. So we had a few Google Hangout quirks earlier on today with UDS. So please let me know if you can see us, and then we'll get started. Uh, let's have a look. Let's make sure that everybody's... Let me just double check on my side as well, and then we'll get into the keynote. Oh, making sure they're not. Looks like it's good for my side. Excellent. So we're all good. All right. Welcome, everybody, uh, to uh, to the main event. Uh, my name is John O'Bake, and I work at Canonical as the Ubuntu Community Manager. I'm delighted to be joined by Mark Shuttleworth, who is the founder of Ubuntu and of Canonical. Um, Mark's going to give a keynote today, um, and at the end of it, as usual, we're going to have a Q&A session. So if you've got burning questions about about Ubuntu across the client and the cloud story, about Canonical and what we're doing, then this is where you can get answers to your questions. So I just want to tell you how you ask a question, so you can get your questions in as we go through the session. Um, and then when we're done with Mark, we can, we can go through them one by one. So all you need to do is type the word question in capital letters or uppercase. Um, and uh, please don't repeat the same question over and over again. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep a log of them all, and we'll get through as many as we can when we're done. This is also not really the best venue for technical support queries. If your graphics card's not working, Mark's probably not necessarily the best person to ask about that. So this is more about things that relate to the direction and the focus that we've got with Ubuntu. So without further ado, I'll, I'll hand over to you, Mark. Thank you, Jono. Hello, everybody. It's, uh, it's great to be back. I hope that um, uh, VUDS is treating you really well. I have to say that the continued improvement and iteration on the format is very exciting to watch. You know, we've always been trying to pioneer new ways to get communities together, new new kinds of communities to get together, new new tools to use with communities. And uh, just in the last year, I think there have been um, a bunch of great steps forward. And one of those has been Hangouts and Hangouts on Air. I want to thank the uh, the various track leads and team leads um, for doing such a great job of communicating all you know what's going on. We're a huge project. Um, but I can hop on and watch a five, ten minute video and I know exactly what's going on from the desktop group. Um, I can hop on and watch a five, ten minute video and I know what's going on in the kernel, in foundations, in various other pieces. And I think that's super valuable. Um, with that, I guess, comes an invitation and a request for new ideas. As we grow as a project, as we expand, it's always great to find new tools coming in. I've seen a bunch of teams using Trello. That's very cool. Um, and, uh, and and teams uh, um, co-opting some Google Docs and various other tools in interesting ways. So I think that's fun, and uh, I think it's really useful for us to keep um, evolving our practice. Um, so I'm going to share my desktop, and uh, and hopefully we'll be able to get a bit of a presentation underway. I guess that means you're going to get my view of Jono right now. Um, so Jono in stereo. Um, but if I pop over here... Um, I should be able to do that. Jono, how's that looking? Looks great. All right. So here we are. We're about to, uh, we're in the home straight for 1404 LTS. Now, LTSs go back to 2006. Our very first LTS was 606. Uh, the 06 was my fault because I try to wedge, a, I thought we should wedge a bunch more things in to make it uh, to, to make it even better. Um, but what we've learned is that, that that predictable cadence of releases is really, really powerful. Um, so we're gearing up now for 14.04 LTS. Um, this is our 6, 8, 10, 12, fifth LTS release. Um, and if you look at statistics about what people are actually using in terms of um, enterprise Linux, very heavily that is shifting towards Ubuntu and shifting towards the LTS releases. Um, if we look on the clouds, it's really astonishing to see the, the number of cloud servers out there that are on an LTS release versus the latest release. Now, of course, the fact that we, we do do maintenance and support for the interim releases is really important um, because it lets people use the latest tools, it lets people um, uh, use a server platform that is aligned with their desktops. But the LTS is really our special. Um, the largest desktop deployments in the world uh, for Linux are on our LTS releases um, and, the, and the largest server deployments as well. So 
Um, I think this cycle has been a, um, a fantastic example of how knowing that we're doing an LTS and focusing on the LTS-ness, right, the things that um, uh, really make a difference for people who are going to be using this platform for years um, make such a difference. Uh, you can see that in the number of people who are running Trusty Today as a desktop, Trusty Today on the server. Um, it really has shone, and I'd like to credit the team that's been focused on um, QA for raising the state of the art for free software platform QA, um, uh, the automated testing, the um, automated rollback, the uh, commitment that they make to, to knowing exactly where we stand on any given day and fixing the issues that have arisen on that day. Um, has made a huge difference. So um, let's dive in. We are delivering the best of free software, the best of all of free software. You know, it's in the nature of the Ubuntu project that we want to be a place where people feel they can express what is valuable to them in free software. And I think um, it, you know, in this last two-year period, we've seen um, a, reaffirm, a reaffirming of that. For example, with the GNOME Unity project. So this is a, the Ubuntu GNOME project. Um, this is a team that stepped up to say that GNOME is really important um, to them, and they have the ability to do what they need to do inside the Ubuntu community to harness, to get the value of everything that is being put by everybody else into Ubuntu and deliver a great GNOME experience on top of that. The same is true of the KDE community. I think it's really important that Kubuntu has continued um, to thrive and to strive to get even better. Um, and the other desktop environments, including, of course, Unity. Um, so we are shipping the best of free software, and we have now just a few weeks left to make sure that it really is the best of all of free software. So the first thing is to make sure that um, we have brought into the platform in some way um, everything that you guys think is important um, for this LTS for the next period. Um, from our perspective, from my perspective, I think we have uh, uh, we've created a mission of convergence layered on top of all the goodness of Ubuntu. You know, we haven't stopped doing anything that we were doing in Ubuntu um, in support of all of the other good ways that people use free software. But we have created in the last two years something pretty special on top of that, which is this unique effort to create a convergence platform. Um, a platform that spans every kind of personal computing. Um, the way I see it today, there are really three areas that are interesting from a computing perspective. One is personal computing, and it's no longer just your PC, right? It's your phone. Perhaps your most personal computer today is your phone, your tablet, your PC, your, your laptop, and your television. Our vision is that you should be able to co-opt any screen that you run into and use it as your personal screen. And, uh, and I think we've made some tremendous progress in that regard as part of the run-up to 14.04. We will see our first tablet releases based on 14.04. So we did our first phone release based on 13.10, our first tablet release based on 14.04. This convergence mission continues. There are a bunch of healthy benefits that have come from to the desktop from this work on convergence. Our battery life is better, and, and, and we really care about battery life. So anything we can do in the next six weeks um, to improve battery life for mobile devices of any, sh any form um, is really valuable, really important. This work isn't just for Unity and the convergence story, of course. Everybody who's using an Ubuntu-based laptop, doesn't matter what the platform is, doesn't matter what the GUI looks like, um, is benefiting from this focus on mobility, on personal computing. The other area that's super important, of course, is the cloud, and then now Internet of Things is a really interesting area as well, getting um, Ubuntu onto all sorts of embedded devices. Um, in this release, um, we are landing a whole bunch of new capabilities um, around scopes. And scopes are the easiest way for you to integrate content and capabilities from the internet, from the world that, the, the, you know, the new world of computing, which is always connected and always accessible, um, to integrate those directly into your desktop. Now, today we have two implementations of all of this. We have the desktop implementation, and then we have the mobile, the touch implementation. But those are completely converging. And the one thing we're really passionate about is the idea that scopes, you can, you can write a scope just once, and then that scope should be useful um, on all of these platforms. So if you're looking for a lightweight way to get involved or to bring something colorful, interesting to the desktop, 
um, or to the mobile world. Scopes are really the single cleanest, easiest place to start. Um, there's, there's a whole bunch of different tools for creating scopes. There's a really interesting long list of scopes that have been created and that are evolving um, really quickly. Um, and, 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 and we're just starting to scratch the surface, I think, of what people are going to do with scopes. What's really interesting for me about scopes is that we're, we're really pioneering the next wave of, 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 of the system interface, right? Scopes are not an application. They really are the system home, the home page. So we're completely transforming the way people feel about the home screen of their phone, right? Instead of hunting and pecking and finding an application, you've got everything that you want right there in the home screen, and you can get to it really quickly. Lots of interesting work being done both on the front end, uh, in the dash itself, if, you, if you're interested in that, climb in, it's all beautiful um, QML. And, uh, and on the back end, of course, there are tons of different ways to create scopes. You can do them in a bunch of different languages, and we're adding ways to do that. Um, so it's very interesting for us to work with people who want to add the ability to create scopes in Node.js or, or other new um, languages, which are suited to this kind of lightweight um, integration. Um, convergence in scopes is now, now real, now that we have tablets as a first-class citizen. Um, so for people who have scopes, it's now really interesting to take them and extend them, make sure that they work really well across both the phone form factor, the tablet form factor, and of course also the desktop. And that conversion story, I think, is the most interesting thing happening in native app development today, right? How can we make it really easy for people to create applications which feel great in one hand, feel great in two hands, feel great with a keyboard and a mouse? I want to thank the application team for the work that they've done in this cycle for celebrating what um, convergence is possible. Um, and we're not alone in doing this. If you look at Windows 8, for example, there's a lot of work happening on the proprietary side of the software world um, to, to, to make convergence possible. But I think what we've got is pretty special. Um, these apps feel to me better than, than what I see happening on the Windows front. And I think that's that's something we should be really proud of, right? When there's an important fundamental change in the way people think about software or think about applications, um, to be able to put free software right in front of that is, um, is a special opportunity and, and one that I relish. And it's great to see what a vibrant ecosystem we have around app developers. The design team um, and the, uh, the community working on different core applications have been super productive in this, um, in this past um, uh, uh, six months, and so we've seen a real evolution in terms of the scale and quantity and quality of the applications that are getting pushed up into the App Store. Um, and more interestingly, I think we're starting to see second and third generation designs. We're starting to learn what works, what works best, um, and starting to you know make sure that we push the push the the the, the leading edge of uh, of possibilities. Um, this oh, I don't know how to do this. If I can stop the screen share and come back, there we go. This phone is feeling fantastic. So those of you who are tracking the phone development, I'm running a Nexus 4, I don't know what you guys are running on, but just in the last, um, in the last week, um, we revved, yep, we revved to the new version of um, the kernel um, and the core hardware support libraries that come with the device, and uh, it is feeling super sharp, super slick, super tight, uh, you know, I'm just loving it. Um, we had great fun at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona demoing um, uh, the, the, the phone interface there, and we sort of cheated a little bit because we pre-landed into that image a bunch of code that isn't yet ready to ship. It's all, it's all open source, it's all there, you can, you can get it, but we've got a very high standard for um, quality assurance for this device because there are people using them as the real phone, and so we didn't want to land all of that code in this image um, uh, for MWC. So I know, you know, I know what's coming, and I can't wait for it. But but even just the stuff that's on here right now is feeling really, really good. I um, I had a fun experience when I was in South Africa recently. I wanted to get a local SIM, so I went down to the phone store and um, uh, kind of we were going through all the paperwork. You have to give them your ID, and then you get a pay-as-you-go SIM, and this, that, and the other thing. And and when you 
when you're sort of registering it, you have to get a text message from them and everything. So he asked for the phone, and without thinking, I gave it to him. The guy popped out the old SIM, put the new SIM in, in came the text message, he clicked on it, wrote down everything he needed to do, deleted the text message, and gave me the phone back. And only halfway through, I suddenly realized, hold on, this guy's never actually seen. I bet he's never seen Ubuntu before, right? And uh, and he was just using it. Um, he unlocked it, he got the, got the text message, he did the whole thing. So... Yeah, we know that there are lots of uh, glitches and shortcomings and warts and bugs and you know things that can be improved, but it's super motivating to see um, to see Ubuntu in the wild on this really really interesting important new form factor. Um, I'm loving the HTML5. I'm loving the web apps. I get my BBC News from here. Um, I I now feel pretty comfortable using Google Plus um, on this phone as well. Um, it's not my only. Um, mobile device, but I'm increasingly starting to find all the apps that I can use um, here rather than on uh, something on my golden cage, my gilded cage um, elsewhere. Uh, so well done to all the many teams and people who are making that rock, making that possible. Um, in particular, the HTML5 stuff is looking really sweet. So um, the the new browser stuff seems to be coming along really nice. Performance has improved dramatically. Um, I think that the work that's happening on mobile feeds directly into our, our browser performance for the desktop, so um, enhancements there are really valuable. Um, I was delighted to see the alignment shaping up around the new um, Chromium, Chrome backend, and Mir, which is going to make all of this super smooth and be super smooth on the desktop as well. The browser, of, co of course, is the center of, you know, it's the most important application, and we have the best browser in the world, um, both of them. We have them right here as first-class citizens. So, you know, I think we have the apps that really matter. Uh, let's climb back into this. And... So creating apps is a lot of fun. The HTML5 story, I think, is is matured nicely. I think it's really important and lucky that um, Google announced that HTML5 apps on, apps on Android are going to be um, WebKit and uh, Apache Cordova. And of course, we've picked WebKit and Apache Cordova. Um, so we should feel really good about alignment between what we're doing and what uh, the rest of the world is using. The, the vast majority of um, phones, smartphones that are out there today are well aligned with what we're doing on HTML5. But native apps are just a lot slicker, quicker, um, and, uh, and nicer. And so it's really exciting to see the... Uh, the native application um, ecosystem growing as well. QML is shaped up really nicely. Um, I'm excited that we've got um, Qt 5.2 landing. I'm also excited to be getting Qt 5.3 in due course. That the, the Digia team are doing really great stuff with Qt and with QML. I feel good supporting them and uh, encourage you guys to support them. It's an amazing toolkit, amazing team behind it, very open, very easy to work with, um, and, uh, and cross-platform. So it's really starting to be possible to write native applications for Ubuntu and Android and um, uh, other environments as well. Um, uh, something that I'm really um, interested in is the use of Go as an emerging programming language. I think it is um, capturing the essence of the future of what the hardware platform looks like, which is massively concurrent, lots of things going on at the same time, and, and making it possible to write native applications um, uh, very elegantly that, that take advantage of that concurrency. Um, so I think it's the most exciting language out there at Canonical. We use it very heavily, um, and I'm starting to spot that you know the cool kids out there appear to be using it heavily too and loving it. I'm very excited that Canonical is leading the way in integrating Go and QML. So what does that mean? It means that you can start to write native applications for Ubuntu Touch um, that will run on other platforms as well. So we think you'll be able to write native applications with Go and QML. The front end is as easy as, as the web, right? It's, it's, uh, it's like using web technologies, except it's compiled natively, so it's super fast. And you've got this fantastic new language, Go. Um, at the heart of it. So those of you who have itches to scratch, you want to learn a new language, or you want to kind of be up, uh, bone up on the stuff that um, seems to be really um, um, moving at pace, um, go check out Go, and go check out the Go QML integration. 
Um, there'll be an app contest uh, for the Go community um, in the next couple of weeks. I think that's underway. And that'll be a fun way to uh, kind of stretch your programming legs in new and really interesting ways. But overall, the app story, the uh, Ubuntu app story is really interesting. So whatever you like, whether it's HTML5, C++, QML, or Go, um, give it a go. And uh, thank you very much to everybody who's climbed in and helped make this tooling um, better in the last six months. Now, the LTS stands for long-term support, and we mean it. I've been delighted in the last couple of weeks there have been a series of threads uh, with the tech board and various leads of the different um, communities, Edge Ubuntu, um, uh, Zubuntu, Kubuntu, and so on, uh, making, making clear what they want to do in terms of LTS commitments for those communities under the big Ubuntu umbrella. Um, big things that are really strong stories now. We have hardware enablement revisions, right? Um, what that means is that every six months, um, we're going to push out a new, or support for new hardware, into Ubuntu, and it's really important that all of our desktop environments track that and work across that new hardware. So every six months, we will introduce optional new kernels and graphics stacks for the latest hardware support for all of our environments. So those of you who are working on different desktops, please make sure that you have a plan to support the latest hardware with your environment. You'll get much more users, your users will be happier. Um, we're doing all of the grunt work essentially in certifying and testing the kernel and graphics stack and X and everything else that goes into that new hardware support. It's a roll up of all the work that we're doing with Dell and HP and uh, Asus and Lenovo and so on, all of their PCs. It's really valuable work and really important um, for our users that you know, if you want them to use a desktop environment that they're able to use that with their latest hardware. Uh, we're making a five-year maintenance commitment to uh, to 14.04 for the for the desktop, uh, longer for the um, yes, I believe that's the case. Um, and with that comes policies around stable release updates and main, main inclusion reports. Um, so please dive in uh, to that, um, dig in, and make the most of it. Um, right. So that's the personal computing side of uh, of Ubuntu, but um, we're also an anchor for people who are doing really, really interesting stuff on the cloud. Um, and so uh, I think it's really important now as we have the final run-up to, um, uh, to 1404 that those of you who have a couple of PCs knocking around that support virtualization, go ahead and build OpenStack clouds. Uh, now Ubuntu is the reference platform for OpenStack development. Um, most of the people who are contributing to OpenStack are doing it around Ubuntu. We put a huge amount of work into making that as easy as possible, integrating and packaging and delivering all of the latest stuff and doing continuous integration um, of the latest OpenStack stuff on Ubuntu. We are committing that on this 14.04 LTS, we will deliver Icehouse and Juno and K and L um, on 14.04 so that people can always use 14.04 with the latest version of OpenStack which I think is really really important um, but the more people we have kicking the tires, building clouds, giving us feedback um, and exercising all of this the better. Uh, there are some very large Ubuntu OpenStack clouds built or being built, it's very exciting behind the scenes um, I get a little bit of a peek occasionally into some of them and it's, it makes me very proud to see the biggest clouds, the biggest companies building great clouds um, on Ubuntu and on OpenStack. Um, we can only do that because we, we, we have such a wide community of people who are exercising the platform on different hardware um, and feedback before the release is so much easier to uh, to respond to than feedback after the release. So there's this, this month of window of opportunity left to really polish um, everything up for uh, for this release. Let's uh, let's make it a, 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 a cracking cracking good one, um, as opposed to an easy one to crack. Um, and then looking looking further afield, the question is: Okay, so OpenStack gives us this distributed Linux experience, this distributed Ubuntu experience. What do things look like on top of that? And I think we're onto something really um, meaningful with Juju. Uh, just in the last couple of uh, months, there have been some really interesting companies stepping up and saying, oh, this is really useful and they want to contribute uh, to Juju. But what really matters is all the things that people can do. And so the way Juju works is that we have charms which distill 
um, all the operational stuff that you have to do to make Hadoop work or MySQL work or Ceph work or Rabbit work. And those charms, um, think of them as like packages for the cloud. They, they handle the installation of software across multiple machines. They handle configuration of that software across multiple machines. They handle connecting up and updating that software across multiple uh, machines. They're a layer above configuration management, so they can include things like Chef or Puppet to, to help them do configuration management. That's a good way to do it if you, if you know Chef and Puppet. Um, but they're a layer up in terms of abstracting for the user um, the way they want to think about um, integrating all of the different pieces in their in their application or their solution. Um, there have been a bunch of really nice um, movements forward in Juju just in the last um, couple of months. Uh, the first and my favorite is the creation of bundles. Um, so if you, uh, I'll sh I think I can demo this, if you go to uh, jujucharms.com, um, uh, this is this is my canvas, I can, I can um, uh, drag and drop different pieces of software on there. So, you know, the classic example is I can take my SQL and put it in, and then I can take WordPress and deploy that, just using the defaults, and then I can connect these up. Voila, now I've got a blog, my SQL talking about WordPress, and that's all up and running on the cloud, which is really, really nice. Um, but say I wanted to... Say I wanted to get a whole bunch of things going, um, then I can get a bundle, which is a pre-configured um, whole set of things, and I can zoom out a little bit. And all of those things have now been um, sent to the cloud, spun up, configured in multiple units, integrated, and all of that's happening um, live, real time, um, on pretty much any cloud that matters. Um, so this is really interesting because it allows people to collaborate at a much higher level, right? Now suddenly we can collaborate around, instead of collaborating around individual pieces of software, we can collaborate around um, um, organizations of software, you know, clusters of software, bringing pieces of software together to do useful things. It's really interesting to watch teams of system administrators um, um, having conversations around this, right? Because it allows them to express different ideas about what would work well, what works better, different configurations, permutations, combinations, and so on. Um, so a lot of fun to be had with Juju. Um, key areas to contribute, um, because this is an LTS, we've got a bunch of charms that are all around 1204. Um, it's time to start um, porting those charms forward to 1404 so we can exercise them with Trusty, make sure that they work uh, really well with Trusty. Um, also, uh, new stuff being charmed up, um, a bunch of new things just landed, um, and uh, but it's a huge world out there, and there's tons of stuff um, still to be done. Also, areas that are interesting in Juju itself, we get a lot of requests for support for uh, CentOS, Red Hat, Fedora, and so on. I would love to take patches for that. Um, so if you span the Ubuntu world and those worlds, then that's an area where um, you could make a meaningful contribution. Um, but mainly, I think, climbing in on finding a piece of software that you use every day on the cloud or on servers, especially if it's kind of scale-out oriented, um, and finding the charm for that and, and uh, enhancing it or testing it or kicking, kicking the tires on it in one way or another. Um, right. I think that's just about a wrap for me. That gives us a good stretch of time for questions and answers. Right. Um, I hope you're all enjoying UDS very much, and um, I'm happy to... I'm happy to take your questions, Jono. Okay, so before we've already got um, we've got a good good collection of questions already as you were speaking, Mark. So for those of you who want to ask a question, here's how you do it: type the word "question" in capital letters, uppercase, into the into the IRC chat channel, which is beneath the video feed, uh, and then I'm going to go through and add them to the list, and we're basically going to get through as many as we can in 30 minutes. So get your questions in, and, and we'll go through them. So the first one is from Spider623 who asks, when is Mir expected to hit officially as the display server? Um, so I expect Mir to be the display server as soon as it's rock solid. Um, and we, we have a story that we're really proud of on it. It is officially the display server right here, right? Um, and it's officially the display server on our tablet. And you can run it um, on your desktop. Um, but we don't want to make, you know, we don't want to 
let a love of technology interfere with our mission to be great for the user. Um, and this is a great place for us to set the bar very high in terms of performance um, where we have you know, freedom to get it right um, rather than worrying too much about compatibility. Um, my expectation is that within the next 12 months you'll see lots of people running there as their default display server um, and by 16.04 it'll be the default display server. Um, and there's lots of reasons why you know, that will let us support more hardware, let us get much better performance, um, and let us do great things with some of the software companies that we care about who are really, you know, they want to squeeze every bit of performance out of the, the hardware that you've got. Um, so that's the kind of timeline that we're looking at. Fantastic. It's an amazing team, by the way. If you want to climb into there, it's great to see um, hard problems getting solved very cleanly and a total focus on performance and quality, you know. Uh, there's a lot of stuff gets written as open source that's, you know, moves very fast and it's all very exciting, but, you know, it's a bit ropey around the edges. Mm. And this is a team that really knows their stuff and is, is doing great quality work. I'm super proud to be supporting yeah. them. There's been a lot of rigor built into that, into that process. So this is obviously the place where people can ask the burning and essential and important questions. Cracknell brings one of those. Mark, what's up with the beard? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you know, it's super fashionable. Occasionally, you know, I'm a slave to fashion. Uh, I, I, uh, I noticed that uh, uh, cavemen were proliferating, and I thought, you know, since I can't grow this hair quite as, as well as I used to, I may as well grow some other hair. I, I, I like playing with, um, I like playing with uh, my hair for some other reason, you know. There was, there, there's some some article somewhere that has a, a collection of pictures of me with different dumb hairstyles. This is not the dumbest hairstyle I've ever had. Um, and again, I think it's really quite, um, you know, fashionable in a, in, a, in a robustly masculine kind of way. Um, I was in Germany just yesterday at Siebert. It was great. And uh, I was going to tell a joke about knowing that the Germans, you know, are super, super precise, super clean shaven. And so I would got up really early in the morning because I had to fly to Germany and I'd shaved, but I'd missed a spot. But, uh, you know, I thought you know, at the end it probably wasn't the right joke to be telling at Siebert. Um, there's a slightly serious angle to the beard, though. Um, one of my colleagues at Canonical was stopped and held um, by um, transport police, who are not real police. Uh, in the UK, and it was held for hours, many hours, and questioned. Uh, and you know, there was no reason or justification or or or, or, or um, probable cause for that whatsoever. And as he was leaving, he said to them, "Come on, guys, what was this about?" And one of them said to him, "It was the beard." And I think that's disgusting, right? Yeah. That you might have a civilized society that judges people by how they look. Um, and so, you know, part of me hopes that a goon will try it on with me. Uh, and the other part of me just likes being manly, you know. <laughs> I'm a nerd. I don't get the opportunity very often. And right, what's that, next? That is the quote that's going to be published. Uh, okay, next one is from <laughs> Pokemon. Uh, we've recently seen a, a nice new lock screen added to 1404. Will, they, will, will the long-needed quality finishes find a way into Unity 8 from the start? Um, sure, I think the new lock screen is beautiful work. Um, uh, it's a lot easier for us to move fast um, on Unity 8 because QML is super productive and uh, um, we have lots of contributors helping make that you know go fast and we don't have a legacy story to worry about nearly as much um, so you know if you if you have an image today I think you'd appreciate how much goes into um, daily quality on this image um, and also how much thought is going into the design of each piece um, so I guess the short answer is yes and I'm really glad that you like the lock screen I like it too Excellent. Next question is from uh, Geddy. Is there still interest in exploring the rolling release idea? Well, so this is very, very interesting. Yes, I think if you look at these images, they are effectively rolling releases, right? You get a new update, um, you know, any time it passes QA. What's great about that is that you get a new update every time it passes QA. Um, and so you've got all the freshness of a rolling release, but you don't have the friction associated with individual binary binary uh, package updates. Um, the system is either good, in which case it's good for everybody and it ships, or it's not, in which case you know it doesn't. And I think that's an amazing that's an amazing new way of thinking about desktop Linux, right? That the whole platform updates for everybody on this 
on this ratchet and it just gets better and better and better. We can all we can debug things more easily, we can share problems more easily, we can we can um, we, things are more repeatable. You know, I think it's a very powerful new tool. And I think we're going to take that to the server as well. You know, wouldn't it be interesting if you could deploy a server and instead of doing package updates, you literally did a system image update and you could toggle between them. Um, I think that would be super interesting, super powerful. So I think that's the beginning of a, of a brave new world in terms of how we deliver software, right? Applications and containers. If you've heard of Docker, all the excitement around Docker, that's exactly what they're doing. Um, and of course, that was pioneered on Ubuntu, works brilliantly on Ubuntu. Most of the Docker images are on Ubuntu. Um, but we've got exactly the same thing going on here. And we should have the same thing for your desktop. That would be amazing. Next question is from Schnook, um, who asks, what does Canonical need to do to be successful in the mass market? Hmm. Well, I th my sense for that is that it's not enough to be you know, a nice deliverer, a deliverer of the world's free software. We have to lead an important area that people will care about. Uh, and for me, that's convergence, right? We have to be the, at the forefront of something that people decide turns out to be really valuable. Um, uh, and, and I think convergence is it, right? I think that the idea that you could have one personal computer, maybe that ultimately is something that's in your pocket. You never take it out of your pocket. What you take out is just a piece of glass with a microphone, right, which is your, which is your phone. Uh, and when you use a tablet, it's just another piece of glass. But the brain of all of that is what's in your pocket. It's your most personal computer. Now, to do that, to do that kind of really deep, forward-looking stuff takes years and it takes deep commitment, and it takes more people than one company can, can, can hire in this day and age. That's why I'm so appreciative of all the people who've joined in to help make Unity a success, right? It's not that, it's not that we have anything against KDE or GNOME or XFCE or LXE. We celebrate those things, right? We do a lot to make room for them and for those communities to be able to benefit from everything that we put into the core platform. But we really want to lead something important and new. And to me, that's convergence. I'm super excited about it. Increasingly, there are all sorts of signs around the internet that maybe this is actually the key idea, right? Look at the look at the um, Asus transformer um, and the pad phone and how those are really moving and, and refining and turning interesting products. The problem is the software is terrible. But we've got beautiful software to go with that amazing and interesting hardware. Um, and then on top of that, look at... Um, Look at what we're doing in the cloud, where again, it's not enough for us to go out there and, and deliver a Unix, you know, a Unix, a cheap Unix. Um, that's great. Other people have done that. That's not our mission. Our mission is to make everything easy, right? Just like we did it on the desktop. Um, it's not enough to go and, 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 and just be there and be free. You have to suddenly make it dramatically easier for people to get amazing things done. That's why I'm so excited about Juju on the cloud because it's for me it's like that first year of Ubuntu when all the stuff that used to be really hard is now suddenly really easy and you see people unleash their talent just you know unleashed as they're able to get the, get the, the grungy stuff done easily and then they get the fun stuff uh, on top of that. So those are the things that are important to me. That's what I think we have to do to, to be successful and, uh, you know, kicking and streaming. There are 600 of us that are passionate about that feature. Absolutely. Josh Strobel has the next question, which is, will there be any commitments to an improved Ubuntu One client across Ubuntu, Ubuntu for smartphones, uh, uh, Android, etc., in future cycles, possibly 14.10 or 15.04? Ubuntu One is really challenging. You know, the, the vision, I think, was exactly right, but our execution of it was not great. Um, and so I think there are pieces of that, that that remain very, very important. The idea that we can essentially um, enable people to hook so glue services together around a common identity is really important, and you'll see that in here, right? There's a... You, you, you can you, you use Ubuntu One as your identity. You can provide other you know, credentials for other identity services as well, but Ubuntu One is there as the default for everybody. Um, I think there are elements of Ubuntu One where I would love us to be better, like on file sharing and so on, where we aren't um, as good as I would like us to be, but it can't be our focus right now because we can only focus on a couple of key areas. Um, uh, contributions welcome. Otherwise, you know, there are great choices there that do work on Ubuntu. Dropbox works on Ubuntu and others work on Ubuntu as well. And we should celebrate that and be, be glad that they care about our platform, give them reasons to care about our platform. Absolutely. We've uh, a couple of people have expressed an interest in, in icons, uh, both Springbank and Benny Bolivar, uh, they fight crime, are asking similar questions, which is, 
what's going on with the icon theme, and can we expect new icons to land in 1404? Um, I, I, don't, I can't speak to the timing of new icons. I did see a package show up in updates just today or yesterday called um, the Ubuntu Suru icon theme. That may have been these icons here for the desktop. I'm not exactly sure. I'm a bit embarrassed that I don't know everything that is happening in this giant project. I can tell you that, that our commitment is, and there's a lot of work gone into building a, a new icon theme which is super professional, super open, super beautiful. Um, those of you who are tracking Matthew James' work um, on the Suru icons, the feedback that I've seen is just astonished. I, I want to print those things out as giant art for my for my living room. It is they are they are just gorgeous, and they're also really distinctive without being kind of samey, right? The 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 the, the thing that makes them ours and you know is is kind of subtle, and so they get to be theirs while still being part of the collection. And I think that's, you know, what he's pulled off there is, is masterful. Um, so I'm super excited about that. Um, I, I would support those being available on 1404 for the desktop for anybody who wants them. Um, I don't know what um, it takes to do that. I don't know who's responsible for that. I don't know if it's possible. Um, but I know that um, the impossible sometimes seems possible if someone sets their mind to it. So if you can either do that or inspire someone to do that, then um, it may well happen. So I, I have a little bit of information on this. I, I checked in with Jason Warner, who was the engineering manager for the desktop team yesterday, and asked him about this. And he said that the design, the designers are through most of the icons, but not not enough to feel comfortable about landing them in 14.04. So they're, they're working hard, but uh, we're not expecting them to land in 14.04. But they're obviously on on the on the touch devices. Will they be there as an option? Will there be a package that people can install? I don't believe so. I'm not sure. Jason's tr trying to drill down to the specifics right now. So All right. Well, if someone wants to package them up, go for it. They're there. They're available. That would be fantastic. They look beautiful. Mm. Uh, so Spider623 asked a question that a few people in the channel were intrigued by, asking, what about 22-inch Sony tablets? Are they going to display as a normal PC? I don't think I've ever seen a 22-inch tablet before. It seems like a big tablet to me. But, uh... um, uh, yeah, the sort of the monster family tablet thing. Uh, they're, they're, they're super interesting. Um, and I don't see why we wouldn't work right out of the box on them. Um, you know, I suspect that they, all of the back end touch driver stuff is pretty standard now. Um, I'm pretty sure we would work um, right out of the box. And uh, I can't, can't wait to test one. I'm, I've, I've upgraded my uh, Sputnik to the new Dell XPS 15, which is a 15 inch monitor with the touch screen. And I've explicitly done that because I want to be running Unity 8 on my laptop um, uh, on the touchscreen, even though you know a lot of the applications that I love and care about are going to be horribly broken in that configuration initially. Um, so um, uh, I don't see any reason why that why why they wouldn't work really really well. Fantastic. Next question is from Springbank. This is a, a pretty apropos question given some of your recent posts, Mark. Uh, will Ubuntu be available for the Nexus 7 2013 tablet? Oh, hell yeah. So, <laughs> let me just, the short answer is yes. <laughs> and uh, super excited about it. It seems to perform really beautifully. Um, I, just, I just flashed this one today, um, and uh, it came straight up, no issues. Um, there was one glitch in the docs where to get it into the recovery, uh, you know, the bootloader image situation, you you fire it up once you've made it a developer Android laptop. You fire it up and then from the from the um, uh, Ubuntu command line you say ADB reboot bootloader, and then you do the normal Ubuntu device flash story, and it just came up. So I guess that team has promoted f this device into the officially supported category now, and uh, comes up. Really nicely. It's um, right. It still thinks it's it still thinks it's a phone, but that will change very soon. Yeah, I'm using it as well. It's working great. Next question is from uh, Michael. What's planned for Ubuntu for smartphones in Europe? Um, so we've got two launch partners. One is in Europe, um, and one is in China. Both of them are companies that have demonstrated that they can come into kind of congested, crowded markets and claw their way in and deliver interesting devices into the right people's hands. In Europe, the company is called BQ, 
Um, they're, uh, they're really interesting. They're, I think they're going to become the first new manufacturer of phones where they're manufacturing in Europe, right? They currently still manufacture in China, but they're a really smart company. They attack things in a very interesting way, um, and that's what I liked about them. That's why we picked them as a, as a European launch partner. Um, so they'll be, they'll be marketing um, some devices. The a really interesting stuff that they do is dual SIM, which is useful, I don't know about for you guys, but it's super useful for me traveling a lot. It's nice to have my global SIM and my local SIM. Um, and, uh, and so there'll be, a, there'll, be du there'll be doing dual SIM uh, devices here in Europe. Um, and then in China, Meizhou, same sort of story, very scrappy, new, feisty company, young company that's, that's broken out and, and shipped a lot of phones um, over the last two years. Uh, they're excited about Ubuntu as a we. And uh, they're, 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 they'll be focused on the Chinese market, but then also those phones may well move into Europe and, uh, and the US as well. Next question is from Michael Hall, uh, who, is, who asks, you know, you've been using the Ubuntu phone. What's your favorite app so far, even if you don't use it on a daily basis? What's the one you've been most impressed with so far? So the, the thing I spend most time on is Sudoku, but I've got like a long list of design enhancements for that one. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I need to figure out who's, who's, who's the genius behind it because uh, I'd like to spend some time with them and see if I can inspire them to, 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 to make me love it even more. But, I, you know, so I, I, uh, it's now my official Sudoku machine. Um, I'm getting BBC News on it, so I think that's a Popey web app and, uh, and a favorite, Google+. Plus. So I wake up to Ubuntu phone and Google Plus um, uh, on it over there, um, and uh, I, I, I use the settings app quite a lot for updates. So I look for my presence from Didrox um, every day. Um, let me have a look. What's running, what's, uh, what's running now? And then I like the gallery. I think the gallery is really quite beautiful the way it's come together. Fantastic, fantastic. Next question is from uh, Arcane. Any plans to get Vodafone on board and shipping Ubuntu for that for their handset? So I believe Vodafone have announced their membership in our carrier advisory group. If they haven't, then I just did. Um, yeah. They, whew, <laughs> they <laughs> um, that's the wrong way to make an announcement. <laughs> uh, followed shortly by an apology. Um, the uh, you know they they they've signed up because they think what we're doing is really interesting and they want publicly to to express that interest so that manufacturers will come and talk to them about their plans. Um, you know we want to be really tactical about how we launch these devices when the first ones ship are going to be amazing for some things and they'll be okay for some things and they'll be bad for some things and that's just reality right that's not because we've done a bad job or because we made terrible mistakes or because we're bad programmers you know, because we've got a terrible community. That's not it at all. It's just because, you know, it's a 1.0 and our app collection will be what it is and, you know, th there'll be things that we don't get to that we want to get to and that's okay. So what really matters is that the phones that ship go into the hands of people who will be passionate about the things that we're really amazing at, right? Because that way they'll be happy. They'll help us make the other things better. Um, and so we don't want to do a mass go into every store in Europe kind of launch in 2014. Um, this conversation is what Jono reported as you won't see Ubuntu phones in 2014. Uh, sorry, what was misreported as Jono saying you won't uh, have Ubuntu phones in 2014. The, re the reality is just that we will be very tactical about the launch. We'll put them into as many hands as we can as long as we can be really confident those people are going to love the device. So um, we don't actually want to have a carrier that goes out and says all of their users, regardless of who they are, in all of their stores should just start you know, buying Ubuntu phones because we think then a bunch of the people would go home then find, that it, find the bits where it's not great and be upset about that. So our, our strategy is to get, get great phones into the hands of people who are going to love the things that are amazing about them while we make everything else amazing too so that in 2015 you can expect to see them in every store from every carrier. Now, we have 16 carriers announced and more that are not announced, right, that are working with us. That is pretty much everybody that matters, right, really, pretty much everybody that matters what has got our back on this wants us to succeed. So I don't worry about carrier support, right. Um, what I worry about now is, is helping developers make great apps. So our design story and the communication to developers, making it easy for those developers to bring apps from different environments to Ubuntu. Um, so, you know, again, a, a developer story. Um, and, uh, and then making sure that the phones that we launch go to happy homes, right? Uh, people who will be passionate about them, who blog about them, who will show their friends. We do this very cool 
little test. Uh, we bring people in off the street, um, give them a shower. No, we, you know, we give them um, some phones to play with, and one of the phones that we'll give them looks like this. And we ask them questions about it and get them to do things. You know, it's standard user testing things. But we observe one thing that I think is very interesting, which is when they sit down with other people, whether they put the phone, you know, whether they put the phone out where people can see it or whether they hold the phone back where people can't see it. And you know what? We win that test every time. People want to show this off. And I think that's fantastic, right? So we've got to put these phones into the hands of people who want to show them off. Right? Who will go into a bar and say, check this out, mate. Can your phone do this? And uh, there's tons of things that we can do that other people haven't thought of or that we do just better than other people. And we want to celebrate that in that first launch period. So that's why we're taking this very tactical approach, very guerrilla approach to, to the launch. Fantastic. Next question is from Steam for Linux, um, um, who asks, you know, as we move forward to introducing Unity 8 on the desktop, how are we working to ensure that it's implemented the right way and the way that we want it so it's high quality? Um, well, the first is we're building on very good quality foundations, right? This was a tough decision that we said we would focus on quality all the way down the stack. If we had a ropey part somewhere in the stack, then it was going to affect our quality in, in, in bad ways. So tough decision, but we made the commitment, and I'm glad that we have to go all the way down. We, we can lead the quality story all the way down. Um, the other thing is that we deferred the piece that is, in a sense, the hardest, but also in the sense the least important, right? Which is the desktop window management piece, right? Because desktop window management is a solved problem. We all know what window management look, looks like and feels like. So we're deferring that problem. We have good window managers on X right now. We will slip mirror in underneath X, and then we will essentially replace the window manager. And hopefully, for lots of people, that will be a non-event. Now, there will be an interim stage. There will be an interim stage where it's possible to run desktop applications in our tablet environment. And that is going to be kind of cool, but kind of sucky. Because what will happen is that you'll think about it as, think about it as, as, as you know, you'll have every desktop application in its own workspace. Um, and that way, we can treat them all as kind of full screen. And we don't have to do window management on them. But you can still use the desktop applications um, they don't have to be. They don't have to be touch applications, and so we, you know we're we're furiously trying to figure out what the best ways to do that are. If you're interested, the Mir team would love to hear from you. They will be leading this work. Um, it should be fun work. Um, we're really trying to raise the state of the art. Um, so even though window management is a sort of solved problem, we don't want to bring another crappy window manager to the table with all of the years of baggage of Unix and Linux and you know X. So we're really trying to do something crisp and clean and sharp. Um, there'll be plenty of opportunities to engage and uh, and and make it you know really fly for you. Fantastic, and we're so cl we're very close to having the uh, Unity 8 preview session, on, which will look like the tablet on, in Trusty as well. So people will be able to play with that very soon. Um, next question from Cracknell: Any plans to reintroduce Ubuntu certifications? I'm particularly interested in the area of cloud computing. Um, so I heard as much as crackle, and then you crackled and crackled some and more. And crackled away. Okay, I'll repeat that. Uh, any plans to reintroduce Ubuntu certifications? I'm especially interested in the area of cloud computing. Um, yes, that's that's a super um, interesting idea, and we are looking at having um, an Ubuntu cloud training course and certification. Um, if you would ping me privately, I'm just sabdfl on uh, on Freenode. Um, I'd love to chat about that. Understand where you are, what the best way to deliver it to you would be. Uh, definitely feels like something we should be. Uh, able to do for you. Next question is from V. Thompson. Which language, either straight QML or Go, besides HTML5, do we expect or hope to be the easiest to port to other devices, such as Android and iOS? Um, Go QML. Next question is from Whome. I've seen that someone was working on adding digital ocean support to Juju. Is, this, is that going to be mainlined at, at some point? Yeah, for sure. So DigitalOcean is a fantastic cloud uh, provider. It's great to support them. Um, what, what Juju has a plug-in mechanism. Really, it's kind of like a shell shell out hook. Um, so you can write a collection of shell scripts that will implement a Juju command. Um, and uh, um, so there is now DigitalOcean. Um, it's not ideal. If you you know, ideal would be to have a full Juju provider so that Juju can natively derive DigitalOcean with all of its APIs. 
Um, but it, it, it sort of smooths the process of using Juju with DigitalOcean. Um, uh, uh, contributions welcome on the... Yeah, I think that uh, plugin is widely available and easy to get, so get cracking. Next question is from Michael Hall. Because I've been curious for a while, what's the story behind your dragon avatar? Ha. So when I started, when I finished um, with uh, Thought uh, and Verisign, um, a small guys of uh, a team of guys who worked with me there wanted to fund them, and uh, so we went through the process of kind of bootstrapping that, and uh, they got in a guy to design the logo. And one day that guy came in, and you know we were going through the logo design process, and he and he had a piece of paper with him, and he said, "Here, I, I did something just for you," and it was this little dragon, which I think is brilliant, you know, a happy dragon. Um, and for whatever reason, I've just adopted that as as my mascot. And so um, we call him Norm. Norm uh, is on my plane and uh, is uh, on you know is the avatar that I use uh, all over. And uh, he's just a happy kind of guy. But he is a dragon, you know, so... Yeah. <laughs> Norm the dragon. Uh, Arcane, any chance of a further attempt at the Ubuntu Edge? Um, man, I was disappointed that we didn't get to make that device. Um, the more the more work we put into it, the more I fell in love with, with what it could be. Um, and it's interesting to see how many of the ideas we expressed in the Edge are now showing up in kind of more mainstream um, efforts. Apple has bought out, you know, two years worth of uh, sapphire glass from the company that we were planning to work with in the edge. Um, um, but more interestingly, Samsung and various others have said that it was it was really eye-opening to them and it's given them potentially a reason to raise the bar on, on, on the sorts of devices they plan. So we're seeing that kind of spec of RAM and CPU performance be bandied about as real devices that other people might make. I don't think we have to make it um, because there are lots of companies that that are great at making hardware. We needed to inspire someone to make it. What we have to make is the convergent software. And so, in a sense, you know, that's our focus. That's our mission. This idea of you know you can use this platform um, as a PC. Nobody else is going to do the software. Like there's tons of other people that can do the hardware. No one else is going to do the from the start, right? So that's why I'm kind of passionate about our mission, right? Uh, I was in love with the phone, um, but I'll, put, I'll be happy to put our software on everybody's phone. Uh, and maybe it's better off, maybe we're better off that way, you know? It gives you more choice um, of hardware um, in the market. Next question is from Josh Strobel. Um, in what release cycle do we expect SystemD to replace Upstart? Um, I think it'll be available as a preview for people to use pretty soon. Um, I know that there are people in the Ubuntu community and Canonical in the core team who are who are passionate about um, System D, um, and who will you know work to help Debian and uh, and you know make sure that it, it's possible in Ubuntu just as fast as it is in Debian to be you know up down with the gang. Um, uh, our core commitment from a production point of view is not to break users. So I think you should look to this becoming the default somewhere on the road to 1604. Um, but you know, just like Upstart arrived almost invisibly if you didn't um, if you didn't know that, you know about it, you know, what's important is that system D arrive almost invisibly. Um, the system D community are anything but invisible. They like to be, you know, um, in your face. But as it comes to Ubuntu, I would like it to be just magic and just work and just be great. Um, so if you're interested in that, please climb in and help. There are lots of guys to talk to. Steve Langasek, uh, Martin Pitt, um, Alexander Sack, uh, Loic Minier, those, those are all guys to talk to. And, uh, and have a blast. It would be great to see that work move into Ubuntu. Yeah, there were some sessions this week at UDS that are obviously recorded so people can go and uh, take a look at that. Next question is from Bob Sam. Recently there was some uh, comments from Will Wheaton that he was a little displeased with the direction of Ubuntu. Um, have, has anyone reached out to him and asked him why? Jono? Oh, sorry. I think, the, I think we had some network lag there. Um, so the question is, uh, is from Bob Sam. Has anyone reached out to Will Wheaton about why he's displeased with the direction of Ubuntu right now? This was something that was reported on recently. No, I'd love to. I'd love to chat with him because I think um, um, it, it would be interesting to hear what what his perspective is. 
Um, I'm very understanding of the fact that you know we've we've surprised people and not always in a good way um, in in pursuing some of these pioneering areas. And you know what they say, you know, pioneers take the arrows, right? Um, uh, I think I've learned some lessons in terms of what we move to being a default um, and when we do it. I think it would have been valuable for us um, to, to build Unity and then have it be, become the default when it was clear to everybody that it, 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 it had great benefits to offer. Um, now, for example, I see a lot of people saying that they're super productive with Unity, they love Unity, they're glad we stuck with it. Um, we know from the statistics that it is by far the most widely used Ubuntu desktop and almost certainly by far the most widely used Linux desktop, right? Um, but I think that we, we still suffer from the fact that we moved hard and fast um, on vision rather than on, on, um, on quality code. That's one of the reasons why um, the team is super focused on everyday quality in this thing, right? We want people to use this as their phone, it's their most, most personal computer, so we just don't break it. Um, um, I hope that Will and others will be super passionate about what we're doing here. Um, and then I think, you know, in the end, if you do great work, forgiveness, um, forgive forgiveness comes very easily to people. Um, I also am th a bit surprised by the comment because we haven't e or GNOME, right? Um, we're still by far the best developer environment, right? I know people who, like, I meet tons of people, they have a MacBook with Mac OS, but they develop on Ubuntu in a virtual machine, right? So that tells me that actually the commitment of the team to doing great work as free software for the free software developer community is super strong. Um, John, you froze for me there. Did did did? Yeah, you know? I, I, I think we're having. I think I think Google's trying to destroy us right now. Um, I'm not seeing any reports on. It's either me or it's uh, it's you. I don't think people in the IRC channel are seeing some. Seeing, well, the voice the voice seems to be clear. I've dialed I've dialed back the bandwidth. Right. Um, if you can hear us on the IRC channel, hello. Um, <laughs> um, if you can't. Hello. <laughs> well, rather, well, rather conveniently, anyway, we're out of time. I just want to say a big thank you to you, Mark, for, for coming in and providing your keynote and your thoughts and, and vision for where we are with Ubuntu. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. We've had a tremendous turnout today, as we usually do. We know it's, it's late for, for many of you. Uh, thank you for bringing in so many wonderful questions as well. And uh, tomorrow is the last day of UDS, so be sure to, to join us there. Jono, thank you for your leadership, and thank you, everybody, f uh, who's piling in to make uh, 1404 just as amazing as it can be. Okay. Thank you, everyone.